Hi, my name is Dawn Huffman and I am the kindergarten through eighth grade art teacher at Millersburg Area School District. I start my mornings usually in the middle school teaching grades six, seven, and eight, and then I travel over to the elementary for K to five. I've been teaching for 26 years now. I started in May of 1995 and uh, I just added middle school about five years ago, I believe. So it's been a lot of fun to see the kids grow and change from the time that they were five years old until I see them all the way up to their eighth grade year. They do tend to change a lot till they get to their eighth grade year. And I believe I'm the only one in the district that has the privilege of having them from all of those years. So nine different years in a row, they have me as an art teacher. At the middle school, we have the art classes arranged by quarters. So once... Uh, once the class is divided up, I will see each section one marking period or one quarter of the year. And then they move on to a different special. So they'll go to music or Spanish or library or some of the other encore programs that we have at the middle school. For the elementary, I do see them once every cycle. We see one 45-minute class period each cycle. So in all total, I think I see every group about 30 times a year, whether that be four days in a row at the middle school, days one, two, three, and four, or just once per cycle at the elementary school. My philosophy for art is simple. I am not here to teach your children to become the next fine art producing, gallery displaying artists. That's not my goal. I don't expect all of the kids to just run out and, and put things out in a gallery somewhere and sell them for millions of dollars. I would love if that happens. Even I don't sell any pieces of artwork for millions of dollars. But I do want them to make art in ways that challenge them to be creative. There are lots of different ways that you can create. It doesn't have to be just paper and pencil. So when I start doing art lesson planning, I tend to look at all the different art supplies that we have available to us. Now, if we're in the school building, then we use crayons, pencils, paint, markers, uh, clay. I like to throw fibers projects in there with yarn or fabric. And we definitely do a little bit of printmaking. We get our hands in the messy stuff too. For this year, things are a little bit challenging because as you know, some of our kids are doing online schooling. So I'm trying to find a way to incorporate the same uh, material exploration that we do while we're in the building with the materials that you might have available to you at home. So if that means that the students in the classroom are using Sharpies or metallic Sharpies, just for an example, and you don't have those materials available for you at home, that doesn't mean you can't do the project. It's not necessarily so much about the materials that you use to make the project, as long as you're giving uh, the process the attempt. So if you have crayons at home, great. If you have nail polish at home, fine. If you have eyeshadow, you could even use ketchup and mustard if you really had to. It's not the thing that you're using to make the project that's important. It's the lesson learned in the project. When we talk about elementary art, uh, it's my belief that art is all about practice. So we will practice. We will practice using pencils correctly. We will practice using markers correctly. We'll practice using a ruler. And then we also practice putting all of these materials away. So it's not only the use of the materials that's important, but the care and storage and cleanup of those materials is also important. Once the kids at the basic elementary level, grades K to 2, learn how to use a material correctly, then when they reach the upper elementary grades, grades 3 to 5, I like to throw different challenges at them to get them thinking about different ways of using the same materials. For example, we do a wax resist project in second grade where we first color with crayon and then we use a washable wa marker on the top so that they can see that combining materials in different ways also creates some interesting effects. I believe that using materials and exploring uh, different ways of using materials, it helps spark a little bit of creativity. So later in life, when it comes to things that you have to solve, you have to solve a problem, you can think about it in a creative way. You don't tend to think just straight down the line and this is the only way to solve this problem. There are different ways that you can attack almost any problem in life. And I believe that this start of using materials this way 
kind of kickstarts that side of their brain and helps them a little bit with creative problem solving later. A big part of art also involves a willingness and openness to try new materials and to try new lessons and to not stick with the same thing you feel comfortable with. I do like to challenge the kids to try something new. The elementary school, I call them challenges. We do a shape challenge where they are only allowed to draw it if they trace it. And in the middle school, I like to challenge them with different materials and different ways of combining materials that they haven't thought of before. When you get all the way up to the older grades, I tend to not necessarily give such explicit directions. If we start working in clay, I give them the clay and then say, why don't you teach me what you know about attaching pieces of clay together? Or let's build something with the techniques that we've already used in the past. So let's see what you can come up with without me explaining it ahead of time. It's that willingness and openness to try new things that will also help them get ahead in the future. And lastly, I do want them to take a closer look at why they're making art. And it's not necessarily just because the art teacher told them to. But the reasons why they put the shapes and designs and colors or symbols in their artwork. Middle school students are asked to take pictures of their project and to answer three simple reflection questions about the project. And I'm hoping that this step, creating a digital portfolio is what we call it, will help them reflect back on why they made the choices that they did and did it help them be successful in what they made. They don't necessarily have to like their project, but I think it's a good idea if you just look back on how you created it and see steps that you may have changed, if you could, to make it something that you would like better. My curriculum is aligned with the National Core Arts Standards. And if you ever want to take about four hours of time reading all about the National Core Art Standards, I'll include a link at the end of this video. They're very in-depth and really for someone who isn't an art master's degree holding teacher, they're probably not going to make a lot of sense, but feel free to just follow along if you'd like. It gives us a lot of guidance on how to get the kids talking about their artwork, how to get the kids creating, and different ways of analyzing things after they're finished. So as parents, when the kids bring a piece of artwork home, or when they're working on something at home, I would encourage you to ask questions about what you're seeing and what they're making. Ask them why they're making it. Ask them how they're using their materials. Get to know a little bit about why they're making the marks that they're making. It might give you a little insight into what they're thinking or how they're feeling. If you have any more questions for me, please feel free to send me an email. You should also check out the YouTube channel, Lanker Art Room. I will also include a link for that for you as well. That has all the lessons that we're working on during the quarter. We're doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of filming this time around to make sure that everything is up and available for all, all of our MABA and distance learning students. So if you want to try some of the lessons, go for it. You don't have to stick to the one that your student's grade is assigned for that week. You can try any of the rest of them. That'd be great. Just send me a picture of what you created. I'd love to see what you're working on. Thanks for stopping by. I'm sorry I can't be there at Back to School Night this year, but COVID had different plans for all of us, didn't it? <laughs> all right. I hope to talk to everybody soon. Bye.